hey everyone abhishek here and welcome back to another video in this one we are talking about nvim 2k and this will be an update to the 2023 video which got a bunch of views and some folks liked it as well um so i thought why not make an update and the last video was exactly one year ago so that was on 1st march 2023 and now we are in 1st march of 2024 so i thought why not record a quick video where we um kind of saw all the changes that were made in the last year and maybe we can make another one in the next year so yeah with that let's jump into the terminal and i have ran this little command over here that will tell us all the commits in the past year and as you can see we have made 480 commits to main most of which were from me but we also received a couple of prs uh, from the community and a couple of issues were opened up as well so really thankful to all of those and if you have any suggestions if you want to add something feel free to open up a pr or an issue so with that let's jump into the init.lua file and as you already know this is the entry point of any neovim config and for us it requires a bunch of files one thing that you'll see new here is this require for user which is a new module that we added but we'll talk about it in a bit so the first thing I want to talk about is the updated directory structure. As you can see, the first sublevel is pretty much the same. We have core, lib, and plugins. Core has your auto commands, functions, key maps, options, pretty much uh, the same. I think as last year, not a lot has changed. Uh, we, we have moved a bunch of key maps from uh, this key maps file to which key so key maps now only has key configurations that change the core neovim functionalities everything else lives within which key then we have options which is pretty much the same as last year not a lot has changed functions has all of the utility functions or commands that i create for neovim and auto commands has a bunch of auto commands that we need all right so let's jump into lib uh, lib basically contains all of our reusable code so it has this icons file which i create and recently have updated it as well it holds uh, all of the icons that you'll see used across neovim and these are all of the nerd font glyphs uh, which I use nerdy to kind of uh, insert but yeah that's icons and then we have util.lua which is a new utility file that I added and it will host all of the reusable functions basically reusable code so we'll be keeping them under the util module and right now it only has one function which is, which is the get user config function uh, and what it does is it lets you load configs for a particular key from the user module and if you want to know more about the user module you can always visit uh, this section in the readme so yeah this user config section this pretty much covers everything but the purpose of this user module is to allow local customizations without uh, changing anything on git so the user module everything stored under lua slash user is not part of git so you can include your local changes here and then still keep receiving updates from nvim 2k so yeah let's jump back to our directory structure and once we are done with lib we can explore plugins so this is the folder that has seen a bunch of changes as you can see we have lang tools and then ui so all of these uh, are plugin configs so they hold plugin configs inside them lang holds plugin configs related to languages 
so your LSP stuff, tree sitter, all of those things. Um, tools has all of your utility things and things that help us with editing. So uh, things like your telescope, things like uh, get science, all of them live here. And then you have UI for things that change the look and feel of um, our new Vim config. And the reason for this change was to make the plugin list more manageable uh, and more maintainable. And then we have our list.lua file, which is the source of truth for all of our plugins. So as you can see, we have this plugins list. Um, the major thing that has changed in uh, the list.lua file is the heavy usage of lazy loading. So now almost all plugins are being lazy loaded. And for that, we have written this little uh, load config function as well. I have covered lazy loading in another video um, pretty in depth. So if you are interested, you can take a look there. And just for demo, if you open up NeoVim without any arguments you'll see the lazy loading stats so as you can see five loaded out of 80 and then the startup time is less than 30 milliseconds and yeah um, also this is the new dashboard it has a bunch of useful actions it shows you your recent projects along with your most recently opened files along with some wisdom all right, uh, so let's get back to our list.lua file. There's actually three more lists that we are storing now in the list.lua file. And they are for our uh, tree setter parsers, LSP servers, and null LS sources. So these lists basically contain things that we want to pre-install. Um, and this is also something that is controlled by the user module. So by default, if nothing is mentioned in the user module, all of these TS parsers, all of these LSP servers and null LS sources will be automatically installed. Um, and for null LS specifically, if you check the null LS file, we have this automatic installation set to the value of uh, get user config for this particular key or if nothing is present it's set to true which basically means all of the sources that we have defined will get auto installed uh, by mason and yeah these are a bunch of new sources that we have defined as well in null ls so i think we can now jump to individual configs that we have updated plugin configs and the first one I'd like to talk about is which key. So as you can see, which key now has a lot more options and things are categorized better. Also, we have these nice um, root level icons which can easily help you identify things and identify the exact command that you want to get to. So this is the new which key. And then if I open up the which key config file uh, you can see all of the uh, different configs that we are using all of the different key maps we have configured over here all right so other than which key there's tree sitter uh, tree sitter saw a bunch of changes in the last year and my favorite ones are incremental selection and text subjects so I'll show you what incremental uh, selection lets you do. So it can help you incrementally select things uh, in your buffer. So let's say I want to select this string. I hit control space. I want to go outside. I hit control space. I want to expand a level further to space. You get the idea, right? So you can keep hitting control space and it will keep expanding. Uh, and you can hit backspace to uh, shorten it again. But this is something that I use quite a lot and it's super useful. Another helpful thing is the uh, text subjects extension for Tracer. And what it 
lets me do is it will uh, kind of do smart text object or text subject selection so let's say i want to delete this particular object right i can just do d and period and boom it's gone so this is also something that i quite frequently use and it helps me save a bunch of time um, there's also this new tree sitter extension uh, i installed i think it's called node yeah ts node action and what it lets you do is it will help you quickly do some tree sitter actions so let me see as you can see we have true here so with ts node actions it will provide you um, some code actions thanks to null ls so let me trigger the code actions and i can quickly toggle booleans uh, there's a bunch of other actions that you can do uh, you can visit ts node actions read me one of them is i think cycle keys so you can cycle between all sorts of cases and this has support for a bunch of languages so definitely explore that was tree sitter then another cool thing that we added was flash.nvim uh, this is also something that i really like to use and it helps me jump to any particular place in the code base so let's see if i hit a s s i can jump to this jump so let's say i want to jump to tree sitter over here so i can just do s and then type tr and it will take me there so yeah uh, pretty handy and then there's also this uh, helpful s function so if you hit capital s it can uh, help you select things so let's say i want to select this function i hit a d it will select everything so this may need a bit of uh, getting used to but definitely useful and then you also have the remote uh, versions of these two which is also very useful next maybe we can talk about lua line so as you can see the layout of lua line at the bottom has changed somewhat and the last time we had recorded this video we were still using buffer line but now we have switched to using lua line for both status and tab lines so if you take a quick look at the lua line configs you can see that we also have tab line defined here and it shows mode buffers diff icons branch um, search count selection count so some pretty useful things so as you can see when i select three lines it automatically adds this uh, three over here and then let's say if i search for lua line it will actually tell me all of the instances present similar to NeoVim's default but this also puts it over here for easy readability so that was lua line uh, next maybe we could talk about some of the new plugins on uh, that i wrote one of them is this to do dot nvim which is the new note taking tool and i have made a extensive video about this one so maybe you can check that out and then we have termim.nvim which is a toggle term replacement and it, it works with the basic neovim terminal and adds a bunch of enhancements on top of it but it's uh, super simple very easy to use and i i use it for lazy git so if i hit space gg it opens up lazy git and this actually opens up within termim um, i also have it configured for a bunch of other things which you can find uh, if you come to which key so as you can see we have it for opening node python irb and a bunch of other things as well and yeah i think that's pretty much it um, again we didn't change a ton of things uh, but it was enhancements throughout the year keeping things up to date and maybe i missed a bunch of things uh, I, I don't fully recall what i changed over the year 
but yeah that was the video i hope you found it useful and if you have any feedback feel free to drop it in the comments and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching bye